And this one has to do with, let's say you are laying something. Now let's take note of this. Untrue will be a chantra. So the continuous is what? The person is lying. The past thing that is he has lied to he lied to you. And the past participle is what? He has lied to you or he had lied to you. That is for untrue. Who chant draw? You are lying. Ah! How can you say that uh, uh, Ronaldo missed the penalty? You are lying. How can you say your father has two swimming pools and Aunt Roberts came and stole one? You are lying. Who chant draw? Yesterday you lied. Already you have lied. Untrue. Now let's come to the next one. Sleeping. Now if I'm sleeping, what am I doing? I'm lying down. That is why when you tell someone you are lying, it's ambiguous. Because lying here could mean you are sleeping and now you can't draw. So you see the ambiguity there. Let's leave ambiguity. We are talking about grammar error. Now, if you are sleeping, you are lying. Continuous tense. Then, the past tense of lying is lay. Yesterday, you lay down. I remember the story about <coughs> uh, Ahab and, and, and Nabot vineyard. Ahab wanted Nabot to give his vineyard to the vineyard that is close to the palace. And Nabot told Ahab that I cannot give you the inheritance of my fathers. Then the Bible records that and Ahab was sullen and displeased and went and lay. He went and lay down. So you see, the person of a uh, lie, sleeping, because of what the guy has told him, he's displeased. The Bible says that he went and lay. So the person of lies lay. Then I have lain down. The past participle, I have lain down. Let us come to laying. You know, at the SHS those days, your seniors will force you to lay your bed before you go to class. You lay your bed nicely. Even the university, people do that. They lay their beds. I'm talking about the girls. Some of us, the guys, we don't like doing that. Excuse me, my colleagues out there. But the point is, you lay your bed. Now, when you are doing it, in the course of doing it, you are laying your bed. So while all of these are lying, lying, this one is laying your bed. Then the past tense of laying your bed is laid your bed. Yesterday, before I went for lectures, I laid my bed. Yesterday, before I went out, I laid my bed. Then, the past participle is the same thing. I have laid my bed. So you see how we use these words? So if someone says that, uh, how do you call it? Uh, sleeping, laying. And he put in the, I mean, just look at how confusing they are. And he writes, he misuses them. You have distorted the message because of the grammar. So I wonder why, when it's funeral, especially on Saturdays, when you see the posters, they say laying down, a laying in state. Laying in state. So the question is, this laying here, nipano, nipano. Is he, is he like my bed that I'm laying? And now said Nippon or Daho? That is the question you're asking yourself. So many scholars believe that the laying state that people write on their posters when they want to uh, bury a bereaved, when, sorry, when they want to bury the dead, should be lying in state. Many Scholars believe that you should be lying in state because Nippon or Daho is lying. And just say, they are, they are laying the person down. Just like you lay your bed. If that is the connotation, fine. If that is what it denotes, fine. If not, then it's supposed to be lying. Because Nippon or Daho. And the, 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 the reason they give in justification to the lying instead of laying is that Lying, nipano da hodada, and the person of lying is lay. So if the person of lying is lay, and you are adding ing to lay, then it means that I can also say eating. Yesterday I was eating. 
Obin so bet me I can say I was wanting to home. Sorry, did I say to home? Because home is an adverb. Home is an adverb, just like overseas, just like abroad. You cannot add to to this words. It's unacceptable. So I said went into home. It's wrong. Went in home. You can say I'm going to home. You are going home. You can say my father has traveled to abroad. My father has traveled abroad. You can say my sister has gone uh, to uh, overseas. She has gone overseas. So I'm sorry for that. So if let's say I bring these two grammatically, I've affected the message because of the two that I brought. It affects the message grammatically. So once again, lying, and I brought ing to lay, which is supposed to be the past tense of lying. So somebody too will say that took in the pen. Took is the past tense. So adding ing to it. I can prefer the time. Into no. Yes, I think this is acceptable. Well, let's adapt to that one. These are all distortions in your communication. In our communication. We can even have words like few and a few. What about little? And a little. Brethren, sisters, mothers, fathers, good viewers out there. When you use few, it's almost zero. When you use little, it's almost zero. Just a only be cry. When you use few, of course, few is used for. Uh, of course, few and a few. They are used for number, those you can count. While little and a little is for quantity. The point is, when you say a few, it means that a few. Just imagine that a class of 100 students and you've gone to meet. 50 of them. You've met a few of them because a more, even if it is 40, 30, a few. But when you go there and meet a class of 100 and you meet just five, four people, six people, seven people, even 10, you can come and say that you met few people, few, almost zero. Then when we talk about sugar, for example, in the dormitory, SHS, you, you tell your friend that you have a little sugar, so he should give you his. He should lend you his. Sorry, he should borrow you his. You are lending from him. He is borrowing you. So lend me yours. I'm borrowing you. I'm borrowing. The person is borrowing you and you are lending from the person. Now, when the person is borrowing you, if you tell me that I won't give it to you, you may think I'm draconian. It is not about being treacherous, being wicked. It's about the language you said. The language you spoke is not clear. The message is grammatically wrong. Because telling me you have a little means who will be. When you say little, it means zero. Who need be crowd? That is why we said few means a class of hundred. Out of hundred, you met five people. So it's few people. A class of hundred, you met fifty people or forty people. A few people. Even more. You can start a class. The quorum to teach is a student. Now, little means zero. A little. A You can even use it for the gary. So if you are telling me you have a little sugar, so I should borrow you i won't understand it because a little means it will be at least if for nothing at all a best soon for the gary for the meantime so if you misuse these words you've distorted the message now i don't know why <laughs> somebody will say some boys some boy oh now then they say hey, hey, you know be some boy, some boy pass here right now. Some is quantity. So you can say some boy. Some boys. You've distorted the message. And even this word, another. Another is used to describe nouns that are singular. In fact, after another, we expect to see a singular noun. So you can say another boys. It's wrong. Another things. No. So... It's unacceptable. Another doesn't take plural. It always takes singular. That is why this gospel song, they said that, Yesterday is gone. Another day has come. Another day. 
another day singular coming after another has come do something new in my life so another day has come but when you write another days have come you have distorted the message enough of distortion of message we'll be looking at noise but there are some words that i want us to take note of there are some words we see there are some words we hear there are some words we use there are some words we write that the meanings that we portray to them are different from the words themselves and that is also distortion before we look at noise in a bit just imagine a word like um enormity enormity then another one is tortuous many people hear this word enormity and they think it's coming from the word enormous and you know enormous means huge or if you like um yes okay let's use enormous so when someone hears enormity he uses it just like the adjective enormous or huge but that's wrong it's unacceptable. Enormity means extremely evil. So the real meaning of enormity means extremely evil. But we, we portray it as huge or enormous. Even tortuous. Many, many, many a person, many a user, many a student feels that tortures come from the word torture. So, torture, the thing comes from the word torture. Hello? Tortures does not come from the word torture. Tortures means extremely extremely long. That is the meaning. So when you write enormity to portray the meaning to be huge or enormous, you are distorting the message because the meaning is extremely evil. When you write tortuous to mean torture, you are distorting the message because torture is different from tortuous. Tortuous means extremely long. And another word is this. Um, Bibleos. You meet a friend and he tells you you are Bibleos. Then you think that it has to do with Bible. Hey, NDS media mesumya me ye. Tortuous. Sorry, Bibleos. Bibleos is not coming from the word Bible. Bibleos means extremely drunk. Someone who drinks a lot. There are some people who are licking barrels when it comes to drinking pito or anything alcoholic. They can drink. So, Bibleos means ability to drink. So you see when you use Bible to mean Bible, you've distorted the message because of your use of the word. You've abused the meaning of the word. These are words we must take note of when using them. Even the word actually. Actually. Many of us use this word wrongly. Actually, it's not talking about expressing opinion. So some people think actually means uh, opinion. Or if you like idea. Eccentricity. It's wrong. So someone will say that actually my... Uh, when you use actually, you don't use actually to express opinion. You use actually to express facts that are surprising. Facts that are unexpected.
So someone can say that actually, actually, I have stuck. That young girl is the one who killed the Night King. Is the, 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 the heroine in the story. Actually, because you are using actually to, to express a fact that is surprising. It is surprising that Jon Snow and the rest of the big men and the big ladies that we've seen with all the dragons, those of you who see Game of Thrones, Arya Stark, the little girl, unexpectedly, surprisingly, is the one who killed the Night King and the rest of his people, I mean his entourage. He used this statement to mean that it is shocking. Arya Stark, Game of Thrones. Actually, comma, Aya Stark is the killer of the Night King. And the White Walkers. So you see that the use of actually means surprise here. The one who is writing this is surprised. Actually, I have stuck. It's just like World Cup and Ghana 2022 World Cup. The Ghana wins it. Actually, Ghana won the 2020 World Cup. And I believe so. Thomas Pati and Co will do the job for us. So, actually, surprisingly, unexpectedly, Ghana wins the 2020, um, 2022 World Cup in Qatar or wherever it will be played. So you see that actually it's not used the way we have been using it. Someone said, actually, I want to go to the um, shop today. Actually, um, you only use actually when you want to surprise people with your statement. Actually. All right. So that is about this words. When you use it, other than expressing facts that are surprised or unexpected, you have distorted the message. People even think that the word flip, flammable and inflammable are opposites. Inflammable. Many a person thinks that the word flammable is opposite of inflammable. No, no, they are the same. In fact, flammable is a synonym for inflammable. So when you see those, I mean, um, heavy duty tracks. Those articulated tracks, those articulated tracks, they write highly flammable. At other times, you see highly inflammable. They are the same. It doesn't mean that the I N here, the uh, we call it preface here, changes the meaning. It's the same thing. So flammable and inflammable are the same. When you misuse it and think that inflammable is opposite of this one, you've distorted the message, which does not make the message to be understood. That is what you mean by distortion. The next time we'll be meeting, we'll be talking about noise, types of noise and the rest. All right, thank you.